Over the course of part one of how to name uselessly large numbers, we worked our way up to one kectillion. And by the end of part two, we had worked ourselves up to one hendillion. But even this, as massive as this number is, is child's play compared to what we will reach by the end of this video. How to name uselessly large numbers, part three. If you recall, by the end of last video, we had gotten a pretty good idea of the pattern that these naming conventions follow. You begin by counting the numbers themselves, then you begin counting the number of digits in the numbers themselves, and then you're counting the number of digits in the number of digits of the numbers themselves, and then you're counting the number of digits in the number of digits in the number of digits of the numbers themselves. Resetting every time you get to another prefix, that means one million. And then you continue counting up. One gigillion is a second number corresponding to a billion, and a trillion is a second number corresponding to a trillion. If you remember, the Ilians tier before this consisted of numbers like microillion, nanillion, and pikillion, or the small metric prefixes. Here, we are using the big metric prefixes. And remember that every number in between all of these has its own special name. So, while this number may be known as 100 adatrae centi kin quadrigenta femti centi nana pikey, septin genti kin quadrigenta nani centi duo octagenta micri tradesimili quadrigenti octo nana gentilian, this one would be called 100 exi tre hecta tetra conta penti petti, hecta anateri, hepta hecti penta conta gigi, hecti octa conti dua megi, icosi tracy kili, tetra hecti anaconti anisilian. The way that you would figure out what this number's name is, is very similar to the method that we used in the other videos. Focus in on your exponent. From the value in the exponent, subtract 3. From what's left, divide by 3. Now what you have left is how many groups of zeros there are on your number after the first 3. But if you notice, there's still an exponent there. So what you do is you go and you divide that exponent by 3. The next step is to figure out what tier of Ilians to go for. If you notice, the original number got up to a pretty big exponent. If you write it in a more reasonable form, you'll see that there are now 1, 2, 3 stacks in the exponent. So you're going to want to use tier 3 Ilians. Here we see 499, and in the tier 3 Ilians that corresponds to Tetrahecti, Enaconti, and Asilian. 400, 99. If we go over one group of zeros, we see 13,000 in tier 3. 13,000 corresponds to Icosi, Trace Achillian. 182 million in tier 3 is Hecti, Octaconti, Due, Megillion. You keep going up the ladder, naming each one, and then at the end, you slap them all together and you've got the name for your number. And in this case, you start it off with 100 because there was a remainder of 2 on the final exponent. If this was a remainder of 1, then you would say 10 exa blah 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 blah. And if it were no remainder at all, then you could just say exa blah 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 blah. It's exactly the same as saying 1 million, 10 million, or 100 million. Now, it is important to remember that this is just the name of a single Ilian. It's just the digit 1 followed by a whole bunch of zeros. That makes this easy to pronounce. It's similar to how even though this might be named 1 billion, this is 1,923,102,445. Each group of three digits gets its own special Ilian name. And that's all that this is. That whole process that we just went through was simply to name the first group of three digits. Each and every group of three digits after the first three has its own special name. And since some of those names given to the groups of zeros would take you far longer than the lifespan of the universe to pronounce, we'll go ahead and just stick with the ones that can be pronounced in a reasonable amount of time. After Ronillion, Ketillion, and Hendillion, you go Dokillion, Tradokillion, Tedakillion, continuing to count up the number in the third exponent. These numbers are the teens, if you will, of the tier 3 Ilians. So, Zedekillion, for example, corresponds to a 51 in the top exponent, which is 3 times 17. 
Once you go past Netakillion, which corresponds to 3 times 19 in the top exponent, you'll start going through the 20s. And then you hit Trakillion, which starts off the 30s. Once you've gone all the way up the 30s, you'll be in the 40s, and then the 50s, and the 60s. You can tell by looking at the top exponent and dividing it by 3, until you get to 1 Hotillion. 300 divided by 3 is 100, so that means that Hoti corresponds to 100. Going back and looking through all of the tiers, we have had 100, 1 Centillion, 1 Hectillion, and now we are at 1 Hotillion. Now, with the top exponent increasing by 300 each time, you get botillion, trotillion, totillion, potillion. Each of those corresponds to 600, 900, 1200, and 1500 in the top exponent. And then once you've worked your way through all those, you get to one kalillion. Here we have another number whose prefix corresponds to 1000, and that is because the top exponent is 3000, 3000 divided by 3 is 1000. So, just how large is a Kalilian, you ask? Well, go ahead and grab yourself a single atom. Now, once every plonk second, multiply the number of atoms that you have by one Google Plex. And keep doing that until the heat death of the universe. Keep your timer running, and once every Google Plex years, rearrange all of those atoms. Once you have gone through every possible arrangement of those atoms, look at how many Planck seconds have passed. And congratulations, you are still 0% of the way to one Hotillion, which itself is about 0% of the way to a Kalilium. You have to remember, this is a very fast-growing hierarchy. So for all intents and purposes, one Kalilium is 0% of a Dalilium and one Dalilian is, for all intents and purposes, 0% of Trillillian. Remember, it isn't that each one of these numbers has a thousand times as many zeros as the previous number. Each one of these numbers doesn't even have a million times as many zeros as the previous number. Each one of these numbers has about one Kilillian times as many zeros as the previous number. Yeah, you remember one Kalilian from the previous video? It isn't that a Trillillian is a Kalilian times larger than Dolillian. It's that it would take a Kalilian times longer to write it out. And once you get through a Nalillian corresponding to 3 times 9,000, you will hit one Daka Lillian. 30,000 is in the top exponent, and Daka, of course, refers to 10,000. 30,000 divided by 3 is, of course, 10,000, so makes sense. Then, of course, after Dakalillion, you'll continue counting up through the 10,000s. Bodakalillion, Trodakalillion, Todakalillion, Podakalillion, all the way up until you get to Hota Lillian, corresponding to 100,000. As you may expect, the next thing to do is work your way up through the 100,000s. So you count Dahadalillion, Trahadalillion, Tahadalillion, Pahadalillion, Exahadalillion, Zahadalillion, Yahadalillion, Nahadalillion. Of course, Nahadalillion corresponds to 900,000, which means that we are jumping to the next tier. One Magillion. We've counted the numbers. Tier 0. We've counted the number of digits in the numbers, tier 1. We've counted the number of digits in the number of digits in the numbers, tier 2. We've counted the number of digits in the number of digits in the number of digits in the numbers. And now, here we are, counting the number of digits in 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 the numbers. The tier 4 Ilian. If you want to talk about uselessly large numbers, you might think that this is as insane as it gets. A tier 4 Ilians. But, of course, numbers never end. So, why should we? I guess this is my way of saying, if you want to see a part 4 to this video, then let me know by subscribing down below.